Papa, can you hear me? Papa, can you hear me? Papa? Papa? Yes, Papa. Papa. Poor Papa. Every now and again, Netflix jump on a German series. And normally, you can pretty much bet on it. If you go to the book, it's that it's going to be pretty good. Is this the same? Do you remember watching Dark? How good was that? Let's jump in. Lena lives in complete isolation together with two children, Hannah and Jonathan, in a highly secured home. They eat their meals, go to the toilets and to bed at precisely prescribed times. As soon as he enters the room, they line up and show their hands. They obey to everything he says until the young woman manages to escape. After a near fatal car accident, she is hospitalized. So there's six episodes. They're about 45 minutes piece. And I have to say, I wasn't sure what to expect from this. If you've seen the movie The Room. Good morning, plant. Good morning, sink. I wanted him to feel safe and that it was a great place for him to live. The one with the young woman and the child, her son in captivity in literally a room. This is kind of that series, like where the room ends, this is kind of where it starts. And then through a series of flashbacks, as the story progresses, you get to find out how and why she is in captivity, why the children are in captivity or were. And so it becomes this mystery to see who did it to them, how they survived this captivity and what their lives are going to be like afterwards. But because the mystery isn't complete, because the danger isn't complete, there's a sense of urgency that runs through the whole six episodes. And I'm happy to say there's a complete story so that you can enjoy it as a one and done, which is great. I hate worrying whether a series is going to be cancelled or um, whether you're going to be able to wait two to three years to have that story complete or they leave it slightly open ended. No, this is a complete story and I think it, think it does a very good job. There are a number of things you're going to find that this story just adds to the quiver of what makes a series really good. One of them being the actors. I'm just going to jump straight on the bat with uh, the young actors here. It's hard to find actors, first of all, that are young, that can hold presence on screen, not overact, but also not appear too childish, yet they need to be children at the same time. I think that comes down into the skill of getting actors through the progression of what it means to act in a TV, but in a realistic way. And that really comes down to the people that are directing these kids on screen. And then it comes down to the dialogue being realistic. That sounds like something a child would say in that situation. That is a fine balance to have. Here we have two actors, uh, Nalia Skirl, I'm just going to decimate the surnames, Nalia Skirberth. She plays Hannah and there's this term that people throw around when you get stories like this and in, in reality but suffice to say when you become the stockholm syndrome you 100 percent believe it so if you take a number of cults that we've seen around the world people 100 percent believe in what they're saying is or what they're believing in is is correct so if you take that situation you're not going to be able to easily get through to a person or that person or a young child that what they're believing is incorrect. And so if you've been conditioned day in and day out when to eat, when to pee, what to drink, and you get punished if you don't do things correctly at certain times and then come to love that that, that as the norm, that is kind of what these actors have to portray and they do it brilliantly. They have a lot of presence on screen, but also make you believe what they believe. Like you, you fully believe that they believe what is going on is the correct way to live, the correct way to do things and, and fully Stockholmed. That is an incredible job by young actors. But then of course we have our female protagonist who is the mom. I think it's Kim Rydell. I think that's how you pronounce her name. She plays this character that is in one sense super strong and doesn't want to break in the other sense she is very broken and she plays a very complex character that i loved watching seeing her kind of unravel as the series goes and it sounds horrible but you you wonder how a person will react in that moment and i think the writing showcases this traumatic harrowing experience you're rooting for the whole time but when she kind of gives into some moments you are sad for her it, it's it's definitely definitely an array of emotions 
So all the actors in this, you know, they just bring their A game. And I think that comes down a lot to the directing. But when it comes to the story, there's a tenseness and the pacing that I mentioned earlier that is in every episode. It's edited in a way that makes you keep watching, wanting to know the who done it of it, but also wanting to know whether your th characters that you've come to care about are going to survive because just because they've escaped doesn't mean they're safe. And at the same time, you have this investigation from this family that has lost their daughter over a number of years and this family are broken. So you get to see the multifaceted sides of what happens when one person is taken away from one from from life and how it's affected all around. And when it's tragedy and when it's a, a kidnapping, you see how that affects communities and people and family, detectives, all of that working over a long scale time never feels like it's outstayed its welcome. The pacing in this is perfect. The six episode story arc is wonderful. The acting is incredible. The score complements the tenseness at times. It is very well filmed. It's one of the best series I've seen this year for sure. Probably going in my top 10 of this year, although we've got a few months yet, but I was very, very impressed with what they brought into the story of this. Between the acting and the atmosphere, the cinematography, everything just felt right. Kept me on the edge of my seat and made me root for the characters and really hate the bad guy and wanting them to be okay, but knowing they probably won't ever be and talking about them like they're real characters. That is when you know that you've done a great job. So I'm going to give this four and a half Nicolas Cages out of five. <laughs> you've got one. Congratulations. Definitely put this on your watch list if you can. There are some violent moments that I wasn't expecting. So put that in like whatever, if you can handle violence or not. There's some language, uh, some nudity. It is definitely for adults because it has a adult themes that you need to be able to comprehend and deal with mentally, not just uh, what you're watching, but understand and think about it. And, uh, it's not as dark as you think it might be, although there are definitely dark moments. It's just really tense. It's uh, mentally tense in places as well. So put all those things, if, if you can't handle certain situations or themes, this may not be for you, but there you go, you have your warning. I thought this was very good, very enjoyable to watch. I really hope that uh, people give this a chance because sometimes when it's subtitled, and I do urge you to watch in the original language and, and read the subtitles if you can, because that's when you get the, the, the clever bits of acting, the subtle nuances, because they were there, they're the actors doing it. Um, if you get people that are very good at their jobs doing the dubbing, they often don't understand because they don't have that directing with them at, at, the, at that time, at that moment. So they can do their best, but often doesn't come across as what you're meant to be feeling and what you're getting. So let me know uh, what you think about this. What's your favorite German series you've ever seen, whether it's on another platform or not? I probably still will stick with Dark because that's incredible. But thanks so much for watching. But most of all, until next time, remember, live long on Tuesday.